Do you consider yourself a prophet? Let me say this much. I consider myself someone who's found grace in the sight of Christ. And if I can be a prophet to you by giving you a study about the Bible, then yeah, let's say I'm a prophet. David Koresh was the child of a single mother who had him at 14, spent some time in East Texas living with his grandmother, who took him to a Seventh-day Adventist church. The Seventh-day Adventists are a religious group that focus a lot of their attention on the end times, when Christ will return and there will be a great conflict and the believers will go to heaven and everyone else will suffer and go to hell. Well, there was an offshoot of the Seventh-day Adventists called the Branch Davidians. The Branch Davidians were founded in the 1950s and built their new Mount Carmel Center on the outskirts of Waco, Texas. By the early 1990s, David Koresh had taken complete control over the uh, Waco compound. He said he'd had a vision and he was the Messiah come back and was the figure that was going to bring the end of the world. The followers started buying into it. They really believed that he was who was being talked about in the Bible. He was the new Jesus. He was a very exciting figure, and he had a photographic recall of the Bible. So he could take you to Daniel and Isaiah and then Revelation and back again in a way that just dazzled people. He taught that if you were going to die for God, you had to kill for God. And the outside evil forces of the world were gonna come in and they were going to have to fight and they were gonna go up in a fiery battle. They're laugh riot. <laughs> There's a madman living in Waco He's bowing his knee to bail Won't you help Mr. Sheriff So we won't fail The Federal Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, after a months-long investigation, was going in with a major operation to arrest Koresh for gun violations and search the compound for evidence of illegal weapons. In their search warrant, they included allegations of child abuse. He's sleeping with underage children, and he may be leading them in a suicide pact. The problem was that Koresh and his group had been tipped off. So they had an hour to prepare, and when the ATF pulled up to this remote compound on a barren plain, the Davidians were ready for them. I mean, they had enough weaponry for a small army and a, enough weaponry to take on the federal government, which they did. So it sounds like they're firing now. And he says that y'all are making the move and, he, and they're going to defend themselves to the last man. So it's by them that to uh, they speak fire, the war speak fire. We're trying to stop the ambulance. All right. We're trying to stop the ambulance. Oh, please. They're trying to stop the ambulance now. Hold your fire. Please hold your fire. Four agents were dead. 17 were wounded. A number of Davidians, including Koresh, were wounded. Two were actually killed by ATF gunfire. Well, I've been hit through. Ah, uh -uh. watch out. OK. Oh, I've, been, I've been hit through the stomach, and it, I think it broke my pelvic bone. There was a point the head of the hostage rescue team said, well, I'm going to bring in an Abrams tank. And so literally, they ordered an Abrams tank to come up. The problem with that was that if you are a Davidian looking at this army amassed outside with the biggest tank in the US arsenal, you know, it looks like David Koresh's prophecies are coming true. Koresh taught his followers, and they fervently believed the only way to get to heaven was to go with him through this fiery ending where they knew that they were going to die. When they come busting in on my door with guns drawn and pointed in the air, and someone fired me, then I'm going to lay down and die for anybody. This just ain't going to happen. After a 51-day siege, Federal agents bring it to an end by driving a tank straight into the compound. News networks from all over the world beam their live coverage to millions of households. 
At one point, we were watching TV, and that's when the fire started. We have what appears to be a fire going on right now, raging at the Branch Davidian compound. And we were watching it live, and we were all aghast that that happened, and that, you know, the, all the military presence and everything that was happening there. You had this national trauma aired live on national television. You knew when you watched that fire, you were watching more than 70 people, including more than two dozen children, dying in that fire right over your lunch hour.